Hi, thanks for tuning in to another episode on Christians on YouTube. And for this video, I'd like to share something from Father Carlos Martins again regarding our first Pope, St. Peter, before and after he receives the Holy Spirit. In fact, I think a lot of us can relate to what St. Peter went through here. Uh, the day of Pentecost, when Peter, now filled with the Holy Spirit, comes out, leaves the upper room, and he preaches a sermon, and 3,000 people are converted that day. Prior to the reception of the Holy Spirit, Peter could have preached the exact same sermon and not achieved one single conversion. So we are being prepared for Pentecost, which is, which is coming upon us. It's going to be a, upon us soon. And the Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit inside us, once inside us, accomplishes what we cannot accomplish of our own, what we can't accomplish in our own power. And so Peter, who had, you know, there's two kind of contradictory elements within Peter. On the, on the one hand, uh, he likes the fact that he's in charge uh, when Christ appoints him as the, the, his vicar within the College of Apostles. Uh, and then, this is in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verses 18, 19. Three verses later, when Christ predicts his, his death for the first time, then Peter pulls him aside and said, don't ever speak like that again. So three verses after being commissioned as Christ's vicar, now he's telling Christ what to do. So on the one hand, he's, he's got a kind of control thing going on. Uh, he's, he's, he's got an issue with being in charge. And on the other hand, uh, Peter is afraid. He is, you know, he's afraid when he walks on the water, even though he knows how to swim. He's afraid when Christ is erect, arrested, even though he's armed with a sword. He's afraid at the crucifixion and doesn't show up, even though he is the leader of, of, of the 12. Uh, and so, and, and Peter, even at the first, at the resurrection appearance in John chapter 20 on the, on the shore, during the, the appearance where, where Christ feeds the apostles with, that, with the fish barbecue, uh, Peter doesn't know what to say to the Lord. Right. So you've got two elements in Peter. You've got on the one hand, kind of a natural leader. And then on the other hand, there's an inability in him to lead. But the Holy Spirit comes and brings that healing. And ap upon receiving him, he goes out and preaches a sermon all about the, the death of, of Christ, all about the crucifixion, which to this point has terrified Peter. And now he, he laughs about it. Now he's empowered. Uh, he's not even afraid for his own skin. And, and of course, uh, he's, he's going to lose his, his own head, so to speak. He's going to be crucified himself. But Peter, Peter has come to the point of empowerment because of the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Holy Spirit does, folks. He, he, he comes into us and sets us free from the dysfunctions which we don't need. And he empowers us so that we can accomplish that work that God has set aside for us to do. And as we know, Pentecost, the beginning and birthday of the church, is an annual feast that closes out the Easter season 50 days after the resurrection is celebrated. The word Pentecost has its root in the Greek word that means five. And it is also a word that was used in Judaism during the time of Jesus, as Pentecost was the word used for the harvest festival. The Christian celebration has its origins in the book of Acts, in Acts 2 verse 1 to 12, where the early followers of Jesus experienced the filling of the Holy Spirit promised by Jesus. Acts also states, while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. This third person of the Holy Trinity is known by a variety of names in Christian theology. One name is Paraclete. The name Paraclete means educator, intercessor, teacher, helper, and comforter. These names describe how the Holy Spirit is present in the church and is present with God's people. The Spirit is sent to remind us of all that Jesus said and taught. The Holy Spirit makes everything possible. These meanings highlight why meditating on the Feast of Pentecost is an important thing to do. With the whole church throughout the ages, we may rightfully pray, Come, Holy Spirit. Come, 
Well then that will be all for the video this time. And as always I hope all of you have learned a lot from this short video. And if there's any suggestion or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next one, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you.